Christ. I see Christ in you. You my brother. Okay, hold up. Yeah, I see Christ in you. I stay on my bros to be better than me. Truth be told. Truth be told. This is what we must do to avoid envy. Truth be told. Truth be told. Hispanics are family Truth be told Truth be told I just pray you see Christ when you see me Truth be told Truth be told Shalom, most high in Christ bless You are now tuning into Truth Be Told DC Broadcasting live via listenvisionlive.com be sure to tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to hear the truth according to the Bible, hosted by IUIC DC. For music, clothing, and instruments of learning, visit OriginalRoyalty.com and IsraelUnite.org. Shalom. Shalom. Most High in Christ Bless. Welcome back to the Truth Be Told DC. Um, I'm Officer Matthew, and to my right, Officer Mendel. Soldier Marsha. And to my left, Officer Phineas. And Soldier Daniel. Today's topic is the Sunday Sabbath deception. So I'm saying it again the Sunday Sabbath deception. So as, as we do always, we're going to go open up with John 8 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So the truth is, according to the Bible, that you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are indeed the biblical Israelites. And we must repent, keep the commandments, and the faith of Christ. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Go ahead and open up with uh, Romans 15 and 4. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Mm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. That's why when you go into Christianity, they tell you to start from Matthew on. But that's a mistake because the learning process actually started throughout even before the book of Matthew. So that's why the deception is, well, what, what is going on with the Sabbath? Let's go ahead and um, uh, jump to Malachi 3 and 6. Because a lot of times, you know, you can say, well, God has changed because you never read the Old Testament. But when you go into Old Testament, the Bible does not change. It's consistent throughout. The book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. No, nah, I change in the New Testament. I change not. That's self-explanatory. So let's go ahead. We're going to roll because we got a lot to cover. Let's go back to the beginning. We're going to go to Genesis. So because Paul said, for whatsoever things are written aforetime, written for our learning. And as much as Christians idolize Paul, they don't never seem to take him up on that scripture. Right. To read what was written aforetime. Right. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of heaven to uh -huh. divide the day from the night. Mm -hmm. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So that's actually getting into the moon. But the lights in the firmament of heaven, that's going into the sun, moon, and stars. And it's going to elaborate on that. And let, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So if we didn't have these things in the, in the heavens, the earth would be completely dark. And God made two great lights, uh -huh. the greater light to rule the day. That is what we call the sun. Mm -hmm. And the lesser light to rule the night. And that's the moon. He made the stars also. And the stars are up there as well that shine down on the earth. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night mm -hmm. and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good uh -huh. in the evening. And the morning were the fourth day. So the day, according to the Bible, goes from evening to morning, not mm. 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about when the sun, when it's completely black outside, that begins a new day. Right. Mm. So y'all brothers got anything in the input on that? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let's go ahead. Let's I'll jump to Leviticus. Yeah. Leviticus, we're going to jump to Leviticus 23. Because this actually gives you the list of the high holy days and, and gives you the instructions on how to count <clears throat> the high holy days. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, mm -hmm. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Hold up. The what? But the seventh day 
is the Sabbath of rest. So when you actually flip open to your phone and, and pull up the calendar, mm -hmm. Sunday is the first day of the week. What's the Sabbath of rest? The seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So as we read according to Genesis, so that must mean Friday night must begin the, the, the start Sabbath. of the yep. seventh day of the week. So the Bible is letting us know just from them two combo of scriptures, precepts that Saturday night but or Saturday begins at Friday sunset when yep. it's completely pitch black outside. And keep going. Ye shall do no work therein. Uh huh. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So we're not supposed to do no work. We we not supposed to do our our labels. We're supposed to do the most high's work. That's how they're teaching the people, building up our nation cleaning up the streets in our own communities, not relying on the police to do what we're supposed to be doing in our own communities. That's right. So let's, uh, from that, get yeah, give verse 4. Give verse 4. Give verse 4. We need verse, verse four. 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, uh -huh. even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Hold on. These are the feasts of the Lord. Hold on. Read that again. These are the feasts of the Lord. So it's going to get into the feast when you read down. Even holy convocations. Which are holy convocations means you must gather on these high holy days or weekly Sabbaths. Which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Which you shall proclaim in their seasons. So that's going into how we actually know what time and what high holy day based on the moon, which is the season. And we're going to get more on that. This is the book of Sirach and the Apocrypha, chapter 43, verse 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season mm -hmm. for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of feast. From what? From the moon is the sign of feast. So that's how we count our high holy days based on the moon. From one new moon to the other, we count the days according to the Bible to count down 14 days in, in the first month. That's when we celebrate Passover. So based on the new moon. A light that decreaseth in her perfection. The month is called after her name. So the month is called after the moon. Increasing wonderfully in her changing, mm -hmm. being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So that's going into how the, the moon has its different cycles where sometimes it's bright and it's dim. You got the half moon, the full moon, so forth and so on. So let's go ahead and jump to 1 Samuel. So, because there's a lot of doctrines out there involving, uh, involving the new moon. Some, some people actually believe that your Sabbath was what based on the right. on the new moon only. Right, right. How so, you gonna count seven days? Yeah. So you do seven months, right? Every seven months, <laughs> right? Celebrate a Sabbath. That don't that even make sense. And then when stupid. you divide uh, seven into thirty days, you get leftover days. So that's that's <laughs> it's a lot of madness. That's why we out here doing our best to do the Lord's work to to, to smash these false doctrines with the scriptures. Yeah, because verse seven in uh, chapter forty three of Sirach yeah. said, "From the moon is the sign of feast." So those are the high holy days. The right. Sabbath is not a feast day. Right. So that's what you got to understand. It's yeah. a feast, right. not new moon. Right. right. That's a, yeah, exactly. I mean, not uh, a Sabbath. Right. right. You know, your regular Sabbath. Right. That's the holy convocation, what we read in uh, Leviticus 23 and 3. Exactly. First Samuel? Yeah, here. Bust that out in First Samuel. The book of First Samuel, chapter 20, verse 24. So David hid himself in the field. Mm -hmm. And when the new moon was come, the king said, him down to eat meat and the king sat upon his seat as at other times even upon the seat of the wall and Jonathan arose and Abner sat by Saul's side and David place was empty nevertheless Saul spake not anything that day for the thought something hath been fallen him he is not clean surely he is not clean right so read that from the top again let's see what they was doing on a new moon the book mm -hmm. of first Samuel chapter 20 verse 24 so David hid himself in the field and mm -hmm. when the new moon was come, the, when the new moon was come, what did they do? The king set him down to eat meat. So Saul sat him down to eat meat because it's a holy convocation. We got to celebrate on that day. Right. So that's just another example. So when you hear brothers talking about the new moon is based on the Sabbath and they're not even having a holy convocation and a feast, they're not in order with the scriptures. That's just plain and simple. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get this um, Isaiah because a lot of people might think it yep. might change when Christ come. Yep. Let's see. Because we already read that the Most High said, I'm the Lord, I change not. But just in case you got a dumb thought that when Christ returned, we're not going to have to keep these feasts. Let's see what the Bible says. The whole point, people, is that the Sabbath is not a feast day. Exactly. So it has nothing to do with the new moon. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, 
and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So even then, all flesh is going to still continue to keep the new moon mm -hmm. and the Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. that's so that's right. letting you know when you read the Bible, the Sabbath is every seven days is what we covered in the scriptures. So the brother saying this new moon doctrine on the Sabbath, that don't even line up with the future prophecy when Christ come back. All right, because even in that one scripture, it distinguishes between the two. Exactly. Yep. It differentiates. Yep. So clearly they can't be the same as we Exactly. Okay. So if you're counting your Sabbaths off the new moon or whatever it is. It's a big stumbling block for yeah. you. Right, right. Almost as bad as that name doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother subject. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> but look, we're going to go ahead and roll this commercial, though, you know, because we appreciate the support. We need support. We need your fuel, your money to, su to support and push this truth. We have a big job to do in Israel. So go ahead and roll that commercial. Picture gold dust in your hair. Jewelry everywhere. We don't even touch the ground. No. All the streets are paved with gold. You know, like your hands to the sky. All praises to the most high. Who given us the life and raising up the twelve tribes. Get your righteous apparel at OriginalRoyalty.com. Please mm -hmm. help support this truth. We need your donations. We need your help. And there's a lot of good things on it that our people actually need. Right. A lot of law, all lawful things on it which we actually need. Absolutely. Because right. we got to rehearse the righteous acts. Yeah, and uh, we're about to get into uh, a video by T.D. Jakes. Um, he's basically saying the Sabbath is every day. And T.D. I mean, I'm just let you watch it. The yeah. Sabbath every day. <laughs> that one of the signs of the covenant that God had with Israel in the Old Testament was the Sabbath day. Now, I grew up in the Baptist church and a very traditional Baptist church at that. And I grew up going to Sunday school and vacation Bible school. And when I went to vacation Bible school and Sunday school, they taught me about the Sabbath day. And there was a great debate going on at that time as to what day was the real day to worship God. That debate continues to this day and has existed all the way back uh, to the Old Testament, Old Testament theology as to what is the right day uh, to worship God. In spite of the fact that the New Testament tells us not to give respect of days, we're still debating over what day we ought to worship. I had run into some good friends uh, as a young man as a seven, that were seven-day Adventists, and I still have a lot of friends who worship the Lord uh, on Saturday, which technically is the Sabbath day. And there was a great deal of debate going on with them as to uh, what was the right day to worship God. I have absolutely no problem with anybody who chooses to go to church on Saturday. Uh, I have no problem with that. I would never debate that. I would never argue about it. I can pass by the Seventh-day Adventist Church and wave and respect and appreciate their right to worship uh, on Saturday, uh, probably because I also uh, worship on Saturday. Yeah, I do. Uh, I hope that does not exempt me from an opportunity to serve as your pastor, but I, I worship on Saturday. I always... Ever since I've been saved, I've worshipped uh, on Saturday and, uh, and Friday and, and, and Thursday and generally on Wednesday too and, 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 and Tuesday uh, and, and Monday uh, as well and, and, and Sunday, Sunday also I worship on Sunday. I don't have to come to a building to be in worship. I'm, <laughs> I worship about it and I, I can remember that uh, my Sunday school teacher took me to the New Testament and showed me a scripture in the book of Acts that it said on the first day 
said that the New Testament Sabbath was Sunday and that it was the New Testament Sabbath because it was a new beginning and that Christ rose from the dead on the third day and from the New Testament forward uh, we should worship on Sunday and while I respect that reasoning and that philosophy I certainly fall short of making a doctrine out of that because I think that there is a deeper revelation uh, yeah there, there's a deeper revelation if you'll bear with me uh, First of all, you must remember that it was on the seventh day in the book of Genesis that God ceased from his labor and entered into rest. He stopped working and entered into his rest. Wow, that was some garbage. The first thing you should notice is he didn't have a Bible. Not one. Exactly. I didn't it, even see one on the pool. Yeah, I don't even know if he had one at all, man. He this probably man wasn't a Bible there, he just church. talking. So he, he, he didn't back up anything he said with scriptures, but he sounds so good. I can see how he can convince people, but we're going to go to the Bible. We're going to get a... Uh, but he did say technically the seventh day was the Sabbath. He did yeah, slip he in. Did say you that. can't lie on the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Not hey, all the way. Yeah, right. Get, get Genesis 2 and 3. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So even though, you know, T.D. Snakes is trying to say, no, nah, there's not one day to to necessarily uh, uh, worship. And we've been studying throughout the whole Bible. Right. What is it right there? The most I said, he sanctified the seventh day. That was the first. Uh, <laughs> holy well, day. You know, another yeah. thing that this clown is saying is that every day is a Sabbath. Whether he, I don't understand it because we have rules for the sabbath so exactly. we're going to cover exactly. certain rules Just, these are things you cannot do every day right go to uh exodus let's start at exodus 20 and uh 10. let's get the commandment first this is a commandment first and foremost the Man. book the book of exodus chapter 20 verse 10 but the seventh day is the sabbath of the lord thy god mm -hmm. in it thou shalt not do any work there we go. okay so the first thing you can't do is work so i mean he he might be able to take seven a uh, seven day Sabbath and not work because he got a bunch of dummies <laughs> paying them ten percent or twenty percent or whatever they giving them out of their checks. So maybe he can actually do that. Go ahead. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor that cattle, nor that stranger that is in within, within that gates. So everything in your household is shut down exactly. on the Sabbath. Right. Nothing's right. supposed to be working. Keep going. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So he set this, this day apart from all the rest of the days. He blessed the seventh day. So now let's go to uh, Exodus 35. Uh, one through three, because the Most High takes his Sabbath day very serious. Right. Oh, yeah. The book of Exodus, chapter 35, verse 1. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which, God, which the Lord hath commanded that ye shall do them. Okay, so now we're going back to the fact that this is a commandment from the Most High God. Exactly. Verse 2. Six days shall work be done, mm -hmm. but on the seventh day there shall be there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest. Okay, so he's telling us to rest again. Go a ahead. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ooh. So the penalty was death. <laughs> That's how serious it was to keep the Sabbath. And he's up there telling you any day is a Sabbath. Every day. Every day is a Sabbath. Now keep going. Verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So this is going into cooking. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you can't kindle fire on So how can he uh, rest every day, not cook as, as big as he is? I know he's cooking or somebody <laughs> right. cooking. He got somebody cooking in the house. All right, let's go to the next scripture. Let's go to another uh, thing that you have to do on the, on the Sabbath. Right, and that kindle fire is strictly dealing with uh, cooking. It has nothing to do with warming up your house. Now, we're going to Leviticus 23 and 3. I want to get this because this, uh, although Officer Matthew covered it. Got to keep hitting we're gonna it. Go, exactly. We're going to go back to it again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest mm -hmm. and holy convocation. So a holy convocation is a holy gathering. You got to back up a little bit. Is a, is, a, is a holy gathering. So mm -hmm. you got to gather. It's a commandment that you gather on the seventh day, which is Saturday. So he's not gathering on uh, Saturday. He's holding his services on Sunday. Right. And right. you can't even do that every day anyway. How are you going to gather yeah. every day? 
So you got to rest, which means you can't work, uh -huh. you can't cook, right? and you got to convocate. So he going to do that every day. <laughs> okay, keep going. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Okay, so let's jump to uh, another thing. that uh, Let's get a, another episode of, of Breaking the Sabbath. Let's That's go to Numbers 15, 15. Yeah. another example. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think it showed on the video, but somewhere in there he was trying to claim that after Exodus it didn't say anything else uh, about the Sabbath. So we're going to. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Okay, so now they found somebody working. He was gathering sticks, uh, maybe for a fire or whatever, uh, right. maybe to cook. I'm not sure, but he was working. And, and they snitched on him and, and got him. Yeah, they applied uh, Leviticus 5 and 1. That's Go right. Ahead. And they put him in, and they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done to him. So he got locked up, in other words, just in case you might be confused. Right. They locked his butt up. For right. breaking the Sabbath. That's how serious it is. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall be surely put to death. Hold up. What? And that was the law. We read that. Read that it. was what we read earlier. Read it again. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Now, understand this. The penalty for breaking the Sabbath today is still deaf. That's but right. the difference is you have a grace period to repent right. and to start keeping the Sabbath exactly. again. Unlike here, you didn't have grace. It was right. instant death. It said, surely. surely. So there was no question. That was just 100%. There was yeah, no hung jury on that even, one. Yeah, they didn't even guess where. But now you have grace, so you can repent. Mm -hmm. And then, But if you don't repent and you keep on keeping this pagan uh, Sunday worship, you're mm -hmm. going to get put to death when Christ comes it's back. Right. Right. It's right. just right. that simple. Remember, Paul said the wages of sin is death. Right. Mm -hmm. And okay, breaking so, the Sabbath is a sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to uh, where we're we going. Exodus, Exodus, tw Exodus uh, 16 yeah. and 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see that you and see that ye will see, and that which ye remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Okay, so this is just reinforcing what we read early in uh, Exodus uh, thirty-five, mm -hmm. right. which going into your cooking. You get everything prepared a day ahead of time, so during the Sabbath you're not cooking. Right, so, so that's, the bacon that's bowl, right whatever there. you had to do, and save it for tomorrow, which is so you that know. means Friday Friday afternoon cook or cook, cook, cook everything you're gonna cook. Yeah. So when the Sabbath comes, you can just eat. Exactly. Right. See, okay. the Most High is a, a, is a God of discipline. It takes discipline to actually do that, mm -hmm. to to cook and be prepared. Which our people, we not prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. And and believe it or not, we're gonna get this later on in the, in the New Testament because I know a lot of people. Oh, Christ changed it. But we're gonna right. see. Go to uh, Nehemiah ten and thirty one. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. Okay, so we're talking about selling on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. And that we will leave the seventh year in the exaction of every debt. So this is going into buying and selling. That's something else you can't do on the Sabbath. So I don't understand how this man can keep the Sabbath every day. I'm right. trying to get it. You got to rest. You can't right. work. You can't cook. You can't buy or sell. And you got to convocate. That's the four laws of keeping the Sabbath. He's doing that every day. I don't think so. Let's what go to ball uh, head. Yeah, what a ball head. Luke 4 and uh, 16. We're going to go to the New Testament. Let's see what Christ did. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So it was customary. Why is it customary? Because it's a law. <laughs> it's just that simple. This is Christ. So we're Christians. Then that means we are followers of Christ. So what are we doing on Sundays? All right, let's see after Christ. Did Paul keep the Sabbath? Let's see. Right. Go to Acts 17, uh, 1 through 2. <clears throat> the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 1. Now when they had passed through... 
Amphilius and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where the synagogue where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as a man of was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Okay. So the, three weeks in a row he went in the Sabbath day and reasoned with them out of the right. scriptures. So it was he just as as his manner was. Right. So this was a, a custom. Why? Because it's a law. It's just that simple. He was raised doing that. So hey, let's get uh, oh, you got something? Yeah, I, got, I want to do something real quick because somebody might try to pull something. Go to Matthews 12 and 1. Go to Matthews 12 and 1. We're going to make this quick. Because a Christian might get slick and try to pull this on you. And we need to see what it's talking about because somebody might get real <coughs> stupid when they read the scripture. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. So he's walking through a cornfield. Right. And his disciples were and hungered. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. So they might say Christ was working. He was plucking corn on the Sabbath. Let's get the law on that. Go to Deuteronomy 23 and 24. What does it say? Pluck to eat. Yeah. And also. the eight, but they might try to, somebody might try to say he was working. So we're going to get the law on that. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 23 and 25. It's going to smash all that garbage. Or somebody might at home might be hanging on to that scripture. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 25. When thou comest into the standing of corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto my neighbor's standing corn. But thou shalt not what? Move a sickle uh -huh. unto thy neighbor's standing corn. So you're not supposed to be cutting it down, but you can pluck it to get something to eat. Mm. So don't get stupid, you know, because a Christian will, the devil will jump on here, pull that scripture and stumble up some brothers. You know, that's why we got to know the law and read the law. So you can pluck your neighbor's uh, uh, ear of corn with your hand, but Christ wasn't out there with no sickle chopping down no corn. Nah, he wasn't right, working. Right, he just right. got something to eat, just like picking something to eat off of anything else. Because exactly. they, they they speak evil on Christ, saying Christ was doing this and that, and he didn't keep the laws and so forth and so on, all this garbage you hear in Christianity. And it actually says, stated in the verse above about grapes. Right. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's definitely on point. Let's get some more in the New Testament. Let's go to uh, Acts 20 and... Start at verse 6. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 6. And we sailed away from Philippi. So this setting the scene, this is Paul. After the days of the of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in so, five days. So that's doing Passover. Mm, where, we, 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 where we abode seven days. Mm -hmm. And upon the first day of the week. So hold on. So he abode seven days, celebrated Passover. Hold on. You mean they kept that after Christ? I thought, they, yeah. I thought it was done away with. They... Unleavened bread. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's your Passover. And he abode there for seven days. And he said, and upon the first day of the week. Mm. So that that iso that that uh uh shows you it's a day, a first day of the week. Not mm -hmm. just and then even when you say Sabbath, right? Sabbath doesn't mean Sunday. Right, right. exactly. So when you put the Sabbath and Sunday, those two don't necessarily go together. Right. Any any man can use common sense, look at his calendar, and say, the first day of the week, Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then you count seven days. Right. Right. For, for you foolish brothers out there, it said the week. Right. So we 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 had weeks. Right. <laughs> All right. Right. <laughs> we had we we didn't just count the days in a month. We had weeks. weeks. Right. Yeah. They just wasn't counting from moon to moon. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> so we don't we don't and the, it up. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's get, that, uh, let's get that other book over there, um, The Pagan Origins. Right, and there's nothing wrong with brothers getting together, going over the scriptures on the first day of, on the, the, first day of the week. Right? Yeah. We but it's a not, commandment. Not com com yep. condemning right. it. Well, yeah, we're not condemning that. We so just wanted to point twisted. that out. Yeah, we just wanted to point that out. It's okay to gather any day you want, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But it's a commandment to gather on the Sabbath and mm -hmm. on the new moon. And, and, and you know what? And even here, it's showing you that Paul even kept the Passover, which is a commandment, right? Yep. Exactly. Yep. In after, the New Testament, after yeah. Christ, after right. Christ, they tell you that Paul was doing his own thing. This is the book entitled "The Pagan Origins of Christian Holidays," mm. page five. The first civil or ecclesiastical law sanctioning Sunday worship was put forth by Constantine 
on March 21st, 321 AD. So hold on, who was Constantine? Time about didn't he say the debate on which day went back for centuries? But the Sunday was just switched documenting history and what what year was that? March twenty first. <laughs> I mean, yeah, March twenty first, three twenty one A.D. Okay, so he put out a decree. So this is this is, what this is telling you. This is plain and clear. Up until that point, everybody was keeping, keeping the Sabbath. Exactly. He had to pass a law to change it. Exactly. And they and he up there. Uh, up there like a daggone snake, like he don't know when that happened. Maybe. As smart as he is and all the resources he got, you mean yeah. to tell me he can't figure that out? Yeah. This reads, on the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and the people residing in cities rest. Oh, the what? venerable day of the what? Of the, the what? sun. Sunday worship right. was the worship yeah, of the exactly. sun. Exactly. Pagan worship. Exactly. Pagan satanic Pagan worship. worship. Because who made the decree? Paganism. Right. A pagan. Let the magistrates and the people residing in the cities rest, and let all their workshops be closed. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits, because it, because it often happens that another day is not suitable for grain sowing or for vine planting. Oh, I want to say something real quick. So they were still it working. Said, no, it, it said that they were supposed to shut down except for that last part. So even the Christian, he don't even keep that man-made law. Exactly. Because right. that man said right. to shut down. What they do? They go to uh, the all-you-can-eat, eat swine and all that stuff when they the get service, out of church. Yeah. yeah. Chick-fil-A follow that law, though. They close every yeah, Sunday. Yeah, they don't, they don't open up. Yeah, they, they, they follow that. Go ahead. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits because it often happens that another day is not suitable for grain sowing or for vine planting. At least by neglecting the proper moment for such operations, the bounty of heaven should be lost. Mm. Page six. Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, mm. Sabbath, but shall work on that day. Oh, he said so, Christians so shall not what? Their decree. I say, I, I, that that so made this what is I was a my man-made head. decree that came man-made out. Man-made yeah. decree. Christians shall not Judaize mm -hmm. on, and be idle on Saturday, Sabbath. In other words, not keep the law. Don't right. Keep right. <laughs> but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor. Mm -hmm. And as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing. They shall be shut out from Christ. Mm. Wow. See, so he'll yeah. reverse it. It said if you keep the law. So, I mean, even by the scriptures right. right there, that's a straight cutter for a Christian. <laughs> because that right there proves that they kept the Sabbath up until 321. Right. Right, right there. And mm. they Judaize. Mm. So, that was a man-made custom right there. Just proof out of a history book. Yep. Now, that's a fine out of book. All right, right, right. Now, let's get this video. Let's get some more. And it's John Hagee. We're going to see what John Hagee got to say. They might not listen to us. They're going to listen to John Hayes. Exactly, though. exactly. When I was in Washington talking to Pastor Mark Blitz, he asked me if I'd ever considered the study of the lunar eclipse with regard to a prophetic signal. I said, no. He said, you should. So I came home, and thinking about what the pastor had said, I sat down at my computer and began to work. I knew that our Bible, this one, was written on the lunar calendar. Our calendar, the Western civilization calendar, is the Gregorian calendar from Pope Gregory of Rome. That means it's pagan in or origin. It's not God's calendar. Our calendar and the calendar of this book do not match. Sun God is for Sunday. Moon God is for Monday. That's a sermon for another time. Believe me, much of what Christianity salutes is pagan to its roots. Mm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Hey, he fried his own church. Straight out of the devil's <laughs> mouth. Exactly. Because you know some Negroes ain't going to believe us. They hear that, John Hagee, that, that's the gospel. Oh, uh, man. All right, let's get Romans 1 and 25. Let's get Romans 1 and 25. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? We just went over that. The, the history book showed you who changed the truth of God into a lie. One of the truths. That, yeah, one of the truths. <laughs> right. It's several that didn't change. But they just said that they changed it from worshiping on the Sabbath day until worshiping on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Read on. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? 
and worshiped and served the, cre the creature more than the creator. So serving the creature, going into paganism. Yeah, that man, mm -hmm. more than the creator. What He said, the Most High says, the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So that creature was Constantine. That's who exactly. they serve. Right. More than creator, the Most High God that set that commandment. Mm -hmm. Right, because he made the decree. Read on. That's it? That's it? Yeah, that's it on that. All right, let's get um, <clears throat> Acts 5 and 29. Right. This whole place is just how it hit. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Yeah, who? <laughs> who we got to obey? And we said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Okay. Constantine, brother. Exactly. That, the, it, it don't say Constantine in your Bible. Obey hey, God hey, okay. rather hey, than hey. men. So now you got to think, all of you Christians that got a Bible, you need to throw it in the trash because you're not obeying the Most High God. Right. right. You might you're well. obeying man. Right. So mm. why do you even have a Bible at all? When you look at church, though, when I used to go to church, people didn't even come to church with Bibles anyway. Exactly. 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 I guess they don't they, got one. They come right. for the entertainment. Right. 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 That's why you got to pay your money. Yep. Keep that entertainment going. Praise dance. All that garbage. People running up and down at church. Like some wild animals up in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's get some more. Let's get some more in it. Colossians 2 and 16. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Uh oh, there we go. Oh, he got us. Or in drink. Or <laughs> in respect of an holy day. This or way. of the new moon. That's where they fall off the horse. Yep, there we or go. of the Sabbath days. All done changed all the rules. Yep. <laughs> got us. Well, we gotta we gotta break this down. We gotta yeah, we gotta yeah, do this yeah. in tandem. So Yeah, because it's, it's a it's a lot of scriptures you can go to. To, to, to get more gonna, clarification gonna, I'm, on I'm gonna go, I'm going to read Ezekiel. So we're we going to go back and forth. So we're going to mm -hmm. see where it's going to show what Paul was quoting so you, verbatim. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm yeah. going to read the yeah. first yeah. precept. Yeah. 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 So let's get this. So, so we, I'm reading Ezekiel 45 and 17, which goes with what we just read there in Colossians. Yeah. So uh -huh. we're going to go let's back go. and forth. So go ahead. Go ahead. Now you read it. This is Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. And it Ezekiel 45 and 17. And it shall be... The prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings. Or in drink. And drink offerings. Mm -hmm. Or in respect of an holy day. In the feast and in the new moons and or, in the Sabbaths. Or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about sacrifice. Right. Exactly. Talking right. about sacrificial lambs, drink offerings. That's yeah. why it says offerings. And even when you read uh, Colossians yeah, 1... It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, which is the law, yeah, and Tim Timothy's our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren of Christ, which are at Colossians. Grace be unto you and peace from our hey, God, you, Father, hit, hit Lord again, Jesus Christ. We had, we had some breakup. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that again. Yeah, 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 like, yeah okay. I, I like that too. That was you, don't want them, yeah. you don't want them to miss that one. Nah, yeah, so uh, we're going to do that one more time. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. And this is Ezekiel 45 and 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings mm. and meat offerings. Or in drink. And drink offerings. Or in respect of an holy day. And in the feast. Or of the new moon. And in the new moons. Or of the Sabbath days. And in the Sabbaths. That's verbatim. Yep. So that's what Paul was referencing. That's why. Why you think if Paul wasn't referencing that, why would he write Romans fifteen and four? Whatsoever was written the four times written for our learning. If he wasn't pulling out the scriptures, exactly. That's just common sense. Right. You would think they was doing their own thing, right? Like he just Paul was out there just making up stuff, right. shooting off the hip. People <laughs> got to remember Paul was a master of the law, so exactly. he always studied the Old Pressure. Testament. And and, and 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 Peter's uh, was that Second Peter's. 316 warn you about that. A lot Those of people letters. getting uh, right. twisted on Paul's letters going to yeah. be sitting on that new cloud. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to get this book, uh, When I Was a Slave, Memoirs from a Slave Narrative Collection. So a slave wrote that. Yeah, a slave wrote this. This is okay. straight from a slave's mouth. No, it was written. The slave didn't the slave write it. You know write. we couldn't <laughs> write. We could, she right. probably got killed if they came in right. there and seen in that but interview. This, this reading is straight from a slave's mouth. And it's, it's uh, page 32. We had the best mistress and master in the world. Lord, and they was Christian folk, and they taught us to be Christian like too. Every Sunday morning, old master would have us have all us niggas. I'm sorry, 
I'm sorry. This jump is making me mad. Every Sunday morning, old master would have all us niggas to the house while he would sing and pray and read the Bible to us all. Old master told us not to be bad. He told us to be good. He told us to never steal nor to tell false tales and yeah, not to do I, anything that was bad. He I, said you will reap what you sow, that you sow it single and reap double. I learned that when I was a little child, and I ain't forget it yet. He was right about that last part, but he stole, robbed, killed, and everything. He going to tell you not to do that. Not only that, notice it says Sunday, so that's, and we right. couldn't read or write. So we learned that from the slave master right. going to church on Sundays. Yep. That's, that's the point. Which was passed was, down through Constantine. Right. That was the read. only day yeah. they gave us off to as Sunday worship. Right. Mm -hmm. And all that jumping around and shouting. They got that in movies like Roots and um, uh, Goodbye Uncle Tom. Yep. yep. We show all that. That's actually uh, African shamanism. That's witchcraft. Yep. <clears throat> you don't find that nowhere in the Bible except no. for when uh, a brother had a spirit on yeah. him. Yeah. Somebody the devil on his, and he right. threw himself on the possessed. fire. Possessed. Exactly. Right. See Paul running around the temple screaming and shouting. Now let's uh, le uh, let's get Mark 7. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips. Uh -huh. So you honor, you honor the Most High big time with your lips, mm. saying, Praise God, mm -hmm. Jesus, I love, I have a personal relationship, all of this. You praise Him with your lips. Read on. But their heart is far from me. Because really, your mind is still in the midst of wickedness. Right. Because you're still saying, you don't got to keep the laws as long as you believe. Mm -hmm. Read on. How be it in vain do they worship me? So in lies do you worship the Most High. Read on. Teaching for doctrines uh, the commandments of men. You're Ooh. teaching the doctrines the commandments of men. We just pulled it out. Mm -hmm. Right. Come worship on Sunday from Constantine. That's a commandment, a decree from constancy of man. Mm -hmm. Read on. Verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, <laughs> there ye, you go. ye hold the tradition of men. Mm -hmm. Right. So you prefer to worship on Sunday. Tradition. Tradition. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, uh, recognizing Christmas. the Sabbath day as it's supposed to right. be done. Right. Christmas tradition. You got yeah. to remind them to start at 352. Okay. So we, uh, it, so just to let y'all know, Mark 7, uh, verse 6 through 8 is also precept with Isaiah 29, 13 to show you that Christ didn't come with his own doctrine. Exactly. Right. Exactly. He always did what the most high ordered. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into this video by Pat Robinson. Uh, we're going to start at 358. And we want y'all 352. We want y'all to see this. Yeah, if you can start at 352, Mike. That slave memoir, John Paul Manny doing Mack. his own thing in Christ. I mean, this stuff is just crazy, man. Yeah. Christ clearly said, I came to do the will of my father. Mm -hmm. All right, All right go on. This is Tony who says, is the Sabbath really on Saturday? If so, why do we go to church on Sunday? Are we all destined to hell if we don't truly honor the Sabbath on Saturday? Oh, absolutely. If you don't go if you, if you honor Saturday, if you're up playing golf, you're going to hell for sure. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Unless your game is good, Unless right? your game is good. <laughs> If you got a handicap of two, then you're, you're going to have no. The reason we celebrate Sunday is because that's the day of the resurrection. And uh, Jesus, uh, the, the Sabbath for the, the Jews was on, on, on Saturday. But for Christians, we celebrate Sunday because on the first day of the week, mm -hmm. the disciples came to the tomb, and the tomb was empty. That's the day of the resurrection. That's why we celebrate it. Well, right, when the Bible talks about celebrating the Sabbath, they're talking about honoring the day of the Lord. It's not, it, yeah, sure. it's not about which day it is. It's that well, you it's do one it. Day, one day out of seven is that you have a day of exactly. rest. All right. This is William who says, I recently received a letter from CBN. In it, it says the Bible tells us that we were once God's enemies. Where in the Bible is that? So there you well, go. You I got one of you got Pat Robinson letting you know that the Sabbath is Saturday. Right. And he, and he was stumbling, too. He was stuttering because yep. he got yeah. caught up in the line. Had to say, oh, Christ yeah, rose on Sunday. He right. Make, he had to make something But up. we right. just read our history. It was changed by law, by man, right. to Sunday. So that's another lie that he up there telling a lot of our people watch that garbage. And we're going to go into one of the lies that he told about the Sabbath being changed because of Christ. Uh, let's get Daniel 7 and 25. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, mm. and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So the saints are the Israelites, and he is talking about the so-called white man. 
Come on. And think to change times Oof. and laws. Mm. And mm. they shall be given into his hand until the times and times of the dividing of time. So that goes into how all of a lot of the biblical laws was changed. You got Sunday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and a lot of churches celebrate these things. The and new all, year. The new year. Yep. yep. The new year, which daylight is a bib, savings. daylight savings. That's Thank that time that was changed. Leap year. Yep. And right. also, it's talking about Constantine, too, because he's the one that changed the Sabbath day to Sunday. Right. So that scripture is referring to him as well. Mm -hmm. Let's hit uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 21. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. So no lies are the truth, and that's why we come here boldly, because we study and we break down the strongholds and we tear down the lies that have been, uh, you know, uh, regurgit regurgitated out there into the, um, into the community. Uh, let's go to Matthew 24, verse 11. Let's see what Christ said as well the, about the false prophets. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. That's your T.D. Jakes. That's your Pat Robinson. That's your John Hagee. Mm -hmm. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So iniquity means sin. So because sin is rising, we hate one another. Right. That's exactly what Christ is saying. We just had two sisters gunned down yesterday night. Mm. Here in D.C.? Yeah, it was a double homicide wow. over in Orlando. Wow. That's the hatred. You know, that's crazy. So now we're going to go into this breaking down of Sunday worship. Um, we're going to prove that Sunday is not the Sabbath uh, quickly. Um, we're going to define Sunday out of the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary for, for the viewers. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Definition of Sunday. The first day of the week. What is it? The first day of the week. Now, now let's jump to Leviticus 23 and 3. That lets you know that there are uh, theologians that already know. They already know what the deal they, is. Yeah, they know because they write in scholarly books. Yeah, right. but, you, but you continue to keep your traditions of men. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. What did it say Sunday was? The first day. Mm -hmm. So we know, now we understand that the seventh day is Saturday. Exactly. And we're going to find out when does that seventh day start. Let's jump back to Genesis 1 and 5. We right. went over these scriptures earlier, right. but repetition is the key to understanding. Mm -hmm. right. Somebody probably already forgot. Mm -hmm. Probably turned the show off. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Mm. So the evening and the morning were the first day. And now uh, let's get into Christ. Um, and at the same time, we're going to pull up a, a, a calendar. So let's get Matthew 26 and verse 19. Another live getting exposed. <laughs> right. The book of Matthew chapter, where we at? 26, 26 verse 19. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 19. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And made ready the Passover. So the Passover is in the month of Abib, okay? And it falls on the 14th day. So they, so as you all can see, as you're looking on the screen, this was a Wednesday. Right. So they made ready the well, Passover. It was start on, but it was like a Tuesday night. It was, yeah, they, right. they was getting but prepared that was a start on Wednesday. You know, right. it, was a, it was Wednesday, but I'm saying it would have been nighttime. It's that Tuesday, Tuesday night, though, technically. Yeah. Right. So technically, it would, it would be Tuesday night, uh, but... It was Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It Wednesday, right. so it was, it was Wednesday. Uh, let's let's read that. Read that again in verse um, nineteen. Nineteen. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. So they made ready the Passover. So it wasn't Passover yet because the law actually tells us to prepare the lamb before the nightfall. Exactly. So this was during the day still. So this right. was a regular day. Right. Come on. Now when the even was come, uh huh, he sat down with the twelve. And that was the Passover. The evening came and it brought in the Passover. Right. This is still the same day because we read in Genesis 1 verse 5 that an evening and a morning is one day. You can put that calendar back up. Yeah, too. Bring that yeah back let's up put too. the calendar back up for the viewers. We, 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 let's just, yeah, let's just leave that up. Okay, so we got uh, the 14th. We got the 14th Wednesday. 
Uh, that's the fourth day of the week, but it, it's the 14th day into that new moon of a bib. Mm -hmm. So that started the Passover, which was Tuesday night. Okay, and uh, uh, did we read up to 21? No, we didn't. Okay, come on, let's read on. We're going to run through this real quick, so y'all got to catch it. Verse 21. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Okay, and now let's jump to Matthew 27 and 15. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 15. Now at the feast, the governor was wont, oh, excuse me. Now at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner. Whom, what feast was this? This was still Passover, people. That's right. right. Come on. To release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. Now let's jump to uh, chapter 20. Let's jump to that same chapter, verse 45 to 50. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land now until if, the ninth hour. Now, if you all know anything about uh, Roman times, the sixth hour is from 12 to 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's the sixth hour of the day in Roman times. So why was it darkness? Because there had to be an eclipse. That's the only, that's the only explanation. Read on. There was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. The ninth hour would be 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So the sixth hour is 12 to 1 p.m. The ninth hour is between 3 to 4 p.m. Why was it dark? There had to be an eclipse. Read on. Mind you, excuse me, mind you, this is still the Passover. Right. Read on. You want verse 46? Uh, yes, please. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabakani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go to, no, let's keep reading. Verse 47, <clears throat> some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The Keep rest going. the rest said, let be, let us wither. Elias will come to save him. So when you read on all the way down to 50, Christ died. He yielded up the ghost. Right. Let's jump to John 19 and 31. Now keep in mind the prophecy as well. That Christ said that he would be in the ground three days and three nights. So right. when he was crucified, he yielded up the ghost. This was the pa this was Passover uh, night. So that would be one night that he was already that he was already uh, in the in the tomb. Uh, let's get John chapter nineteen verse thirty one. The book of John chapter nineteen verse thirty one. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for the Sabbath day was an high day. See, that Sabbath day wasn't high day, meaning Passover. The first right. day of Passover is considered a high holy day, Sabbath. Mm -hmm. so, so that wasn't Friday night. Exactly. It wasn't Friday night. And according to the law of uh, Deuteronomy, we're going we're gonna to find out. Come on. But so Pilate, that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Okay, now let's jump to Matthew 27, 57 to 58. We hope that we're not losing anybody and that you all are taking notes. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 58. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Give me 57. Verse 57. When the even was come, there was a rich man of a mafia named Joseph, who also was Jesus' disciple. Okay. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. Why did, uh, why did um, Joseph beg for the body to come down? Because according to Deuteronomy 21 and 22, mm -hmm. any time that an Israelite was hung on a tree, no matter what the circumstance was, the body had to be buried that day. Right. So Christ had to go into the tomb that Passover night, which would make the first night. Yeah. Right. Now let's jump to Matthew 12 and 40. Can we, if, can we pull it back up, that, uh, that picture, let's please? Get that let's get that back up so that we can explain this quick. to the viewers real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 40. Come on. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, uh -huh. so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Christ is giving you all a clue. So let's look at this. So Wednesday night, Christ is in the tomb. Uh, Thursday is, a, is the first day. Thursday night is the, um, is the, is the second night. Mm -hmm. Then you got Friday. That's the second day. And... Um, Friday night is the third night. Then Saturday would be the third day. So that's the day he rose. That's right. Christ yeah. rose on a Saturday. That's why when they came in on the first day of the week, he was already gone. Yeah, let's get that. For let's you. get that. This is the last script. You, oh. That's John 11 and 9. The book of John, chapter 11, verse 9. And Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in a day? 
If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. So that's just to prove that that there is a twelve hours in the there's twenty four hours in a day. Um, you want Matthew twenty eight? Yeah, that's the last one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's yeah. get this real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter twenty eight, verse one. Verse one. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, okay. came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye. For I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, mm. for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. So the so Christ rose already on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. He was gone. He was already risen. He was already risen for uh for the Sabbath day. Right. That's why when they came there, he was gone. We said the first right. day of the week, which we read is Sunday. And when you look at a calendar, so you know. Yeah. Yep. So we appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll mm -hmm. see y'all again next week. And with that. We say shalom. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. What's that? The spirit of the most high God. The commandments of the most high God. The Bible says from Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown is what? No buying or selling. That's the Sabbath day. We keep that. The Bible comes us that we wear fringes. That's what you see in all the brothers. We keep that. And that's why we're here to teach our people that. That's the Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.